And today show we're going to use the PowerUp's last function to build a auto-incrementing primary key-like functionality in Excel. So if you have data sources that aren't like SQL where you get an auto-increment column automatically, we're just going to look at how you might uh, recreate some of that functionality. Uh, a couple of little quick customizations should be pretty quick, should be pretty fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with PowerApps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to recreate the primary key functionality in PowerApps for an Excel workbook, right? Now, this doesn't only have to be for Excel. This could be any data source you had that didn't have some type of auto-incrementing ID key available. And so we're just going to talk about how you use the last function to get the last one and then tack that on the bottom. And we're going to do it by customizing a form. So that way I can show you a couple more little tricks, things to think about when you're trying to customize the form experience. So should be a pretty easy video, but uh, hopefully it kind of gets everyone moving in the right direction with uh, this particular topic. So let's just switch over to my desktop. And so over here on my desktop, I have in OneDrive a workbook called My Products Workbook. And so in there, I created a new worksheet and a new table called, I think, ID Products. And so we did. I just made a column called ID. This is just a general column. And so manually thus far, I've just done one to eight product name, color, right? It doesn't matter. You don't overthink it. This is just a simple data set I wanted to start from. And it is easier if you start with uh, some data though, because it's always easier to you know manipulate things if there's actually data there to manipulate, right? Cool, all right. So let's go over here. We'll just close out of this. We'll get out of this. We'll go to our Power Apps and we're gonna do a uh, new one from OneDrive for Business. We'll do the phone layout and we'll choose our My Products Workbook Excel. And then there's our ID products table and say connect. Now keep in mind, you don't have to use this template or anything, right? But I thought this was an easy place to start because it created a whole bunch of screens for me. So I didn't have to show you how to create those. And, you know, I know a lot of people who are still using Excel as a data source, which Excel is probably not your long-term solution. Kind of keep that in mind, right? Excel is great for learning right now, but in reality, we want to get you off to Azure SQL or to CDS. Um, some people jump into SharePoint, still probably not perfect, but, uh, Anyway, I respect you're in Excel, not judging, but uh, just know it's probably not the best answer in the end. Okay, so we'll skip the welcome. And so here you can see they made us a simple app. And the first thing I'm gonna do, because it makes no sense to me, is the app is currently sorted by color, right? So we're gonna sort it by ID. And we'll click out, boom. So ID one through eight, All right? Um, and if you're like, whoa, how did you just do that? There's a video on getting started with Excel and then the sort button and all that. So there's some links down below if you're like, this is a little new, um, but I won't go over that again. All right, so then if we go in here, so if we say, all right, so right now it's showing the color, the product name, the ID. And then if we say view item details, we see color, ID, and this. And if we do edit, well, right now I can just make the ID anything I want. So this is not what we want, right? So we need to do two things here. One is we need to take away the ability to edit the ID to existing people. And then two, we need to make sure that we auto increment a new uh, record. All right, so let's close out of here. And so what I would probably do is I'd go back over here, let's start at the beginning again. Well, first off, we're gonna fix our browse gallery again because I do not like the way this shows. So we're gonna say our title is actually product name and then our body will be color. Okay. Sorry, sometimes it bothers me when data doesn't look right. That looks much better. So then if we go to our detail screen, so this is just the view screen. Well, what I'm gonna do is you probably don't wanna view the ID. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I'm gonna assume you don't. So what would we do, right? We would just click on our detail form one, right, I'll pull it up here. So detail form one, it's selected, choose our layout. And we're gonna say, all right, we do not wanna show them ID anymore. And then I wanna pull color below, so product name color. Okay, that looks good. Probably should fix that, but we're not gonna do that today. So then let's go to the edit screen. So edit screen. And so right now they can edit ID. So first off in my solution, there's no scenario where I want them to ever edit ID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to advanced. I'm gonna unlock my card. And then I'm gonna say, all right, Mr. ID, your uh, display mode is not gonna be parent display mode. Your display mode is going to be display mode dot view, right? Because I don't ever want them to do, um, to be able to edit the ID. Now we're gonna have to leave, we're gonna leave it on the screen for now. Okay, so let's fix that. So let's do edit form, let's do properties. 
and let's pull color down here, ID down here. Oh, and if you're wondering why is there two IDs? Well, the reason is because when I unlocked this ID, right, it became a custom card. And so they were offering me the unaltered, unlocked version of the ID card again, but we don't want that. So we're happy with what we got. Okay. So if we do this, now they can see, when they come to the edit screen, they have an experience where they see the ID, but they can't mess with it. And that's kind of what, a step in the right direction. But what happens, remember with this default app, if we go over here, we hit play, and we do a new, right, and we X out, we can see that it also takes us to the edit screen. And now there's no value in ID, right? Because parent default is not um, a value. So here's where you're going to have to write a little bit of an if function. So we're going to say if uh, edit form one, right? So that's our form. So if edit form one dot mode equals form mode dot new, right? So if, so if the form mode is in new and that was derived whether or not we were editing an item or creating a new, right? We, that was set and I can go back and show you that in just a second where that got set. But so if the mode is new, then what we want is we want to, we're going to create um, a new ID. And so that ID is going to be this little chunk of code right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want last of ID products. So get the last record out of our Excel, right? So get the last one and get its ID column. So its ID column, I think when we looked at the example, I probably should have left OneDrive open, huh? Let's open it back up again. Then we'll click on my products workbook. So right now the last ID is eight in this list. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna grab the last record and get its ID, so eight, and then it's gonna add one to it. So that'll make the ID's value good old fashioned uh, nine. And if it's not uh, this mode, right, then what do we wanna do is we wanna do um, good old parent.default, right, which is pull the old value in. See, so there's our nine. So if we hit play, so we can see we're on the new, we're on the screen from new, it's nine. If we X out of here and go open up uh, houseboat, so it should be two. So we'll say two. If we edit this, it's two, right? So that was an important step because we don't want to, when you edit houseboats, to be houseboats and cars. We don't want to change the ID to be nine at this point, right? We want it to stay two. So we say check, and then we'll go back to the gallery. And so houseboats and cars is still two. But all right, so the last one's eight. So we say add another record, and we call this demo stuff. Very descriptive name. We'll give it a color of blue. Its ID should be set to nine. So we'll say submit item. All right, so that's nine. Woohoo! So that's what we wanted, right? We wanted this auto incrementing column. So if we go over here, we'll close out of Excel. We'll open Excel back up just to prove that it's the same in Excel. You guys know it is at this point. There it is, nine demo stuff. Yeah. So that is how you would create this auto incrementing column, right? So it's on the edit screen. Now in reality, you know, maybe in hindsight here, I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna say, you know what? We're just never gonna make this visible. So false, boom. And so then now, right, we know that'll stay, or so change this back to house and boats, and this should still stay two. All right, that one's still two. Nine is our last one, let's create a new item. Product name is, should be 10, right? It's a good product name. Color is red, oop, not you. <laughs> Color is red, let's say submit item. We'll cross our fingers. And then we'll go down here at the bottom, oh, and so because we're sorting, whatever, we won't talk about, worry about it, but there it is. Should be 10 is 10. So there you go. Auto incrementing columns. You can show them to users. You cannot. I would definitely have them on the screen while you're working out your logic. But once you get them all solved, you can even hide them and do them all behind the scenes. So, and this question comes thanks to Denise. Denise sent me an email. She said, hey, how do you do this? And conceptually in my head, I knew how to do it, but I hadn't worked out the exact steps. So I sat down and made this video real quick. Um, it's always one of the best ways to get me to action on your problem is if it's something that I almost you know, know, those are always the ones that kind of intrigue me. I'm like, ah, must finish that now. So, but you know, I've got a really long list of things that I keep track of. You know, it's over here. It's probably 20 something items long. Look at that big old list. So you can get things added to this list. Leave me comments, emails, tweets, all that stuff. 
And if it's not something that works out for everyone, then you can always engage with the old Power Apps 911 to get me and you to solve that problem for you together. So hopefully this helps. Thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and you know, enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.